All right, it's 10.30, we can get started. Uh, my name is Anjali Bhange, and I have with me here Summer Hall. And this session is about extending linear referencing system capabilities to pipeline organization using ArcGIS pipeline referencing product. How many of you heard about ArcGIS pipeline referencing product here? Wow. Everyone in here feel pretty comfortable with linear referencing concepts and terminology? So for those of you who don't know what linear referencing is, linear referencing is a method for finding locations using relative position along a linear feature. So instead of finding locations using lat long or using coordinates, in linear referencing, what we are doing is finding relative finding locations using relative position along a linear feature, and that linear feature is called a route. Anything that describes a route or anything that falls on a route is what an event is. Just two terminologies to be aware of route and event throughout this session. And the way I plan this session is I have about 10 to 15 minutes of a presentation that gives an overview of ArcGIS pipeline referencing product, and then we have few demos to show. But today we'll be focusing mostly on the linear referencing system capabilities to pipeline organizations. That's what we'll be focusing most of this session on. So let's get started. As I mentioned, ArcGIS pipeline referencing is simply a GIS-enabled linear referencing platform to meet pipeline organization needs. With pipeline referencing, the functionalities and capabilities that we provide is, we provide users the tools to administer, to manage, and to maintain their linear reference data. Not only we provide tools to administer and manage their linear referencing data, but we also provide tools to give an information model. Pipeline organizations can use this information model and build their linear referencing system around this information model. If they have events, they can refer the events to this information model. And now that the linear referencing system of the organization, the pipeline organization is built, we provide tools to publish this as web services and expose it to an enterprise level and share it with the entire organization as needed. Along with pipeline referencing also comes geoprocessing tools. These geoprocessing tools could be used for bulk loading of data, event data. And since it's a geoprocessing tool, this can be published as a GP services and these geoprocessing tools are scriptable as well. Our business partners can complement ArcGIS pipeline referencing by providing vertical solutions such as inline inspection, alignment sheet generator, HCA analysis. All of these solutions are provided by the business partners and can sit on the top of ArcGIS pipeline referencing platform itself to give pipeline organization an entire solution for their organization. ArcGIS pipeline referencing product is packaged along with ArcGIS data reviewer. This is where the organizations can use data reviewer to do their quality control and quality assurance check. It's also packaged along with ArcGIS workflow manager where the users can orchestrate the workflows and ESRI production and mapping as well. It's all packaged together. Users can configure utility and pipeline data model easily with ArcGIS pipeline referencing. Utility and pipeline data model is ESRI's new data model that can hold the data 
for the gathering, the transmission, and the distribution. All these three different kinds of pipeline can hold the data within one data model. It's a unified data model. And as I mentioned again, the partnered solutions can complement ArcGIS pipeline referencing by providing vertical solutions to it. Now that we have the entire linear referencing built and we have other products that are working together along with online contents and services, the business partner solution, this all can be exposed at the enterprise level and can be shared for your pipeline organization, anywhere from your knowledge workers to field crew members. Now let's take a look at the location model or an information model. The location model of ArcGIS pipeline referencing starts with a center line. A center line is a polyline feature class that provides the shape and geometry for the routes. And using the center line, we build routes. Routes are now polyline M, measure enabled feature classes. And it's getting its shape and geometry from the center line. The center line sequence is a key table that's holding the relationship between center lines and routes. So you could have multiple center lines that can build up one route. So the center line sequence table is holding the relationship between the center lines and a route. And calibration point is a point feature class that's holding the measure for the routes. In pipeline referencing, each route at minimum has two calibration points, the begin and the end. And we provide tools to the user. If they have more calibration points that they want to add, we provide tools for that as well. Another advantage of having ArcGIS pipeline referencing is we provide support for multiple linear referencing methods. Under one advanced linear referencing system, we give users an ability to build multiple linear referencing systems. On the slide, I have two center lines, and you can see the network A and the network B is built using the same center lines. These two networks are using different linear referencing methods and they have different calibrations as well. So using pipeline referencing, a user can have multiple linear referencing systems under one advanced linear referencing system. And pipeline organization can really benefit with it. They could have a linear referencing system set up just to show engineering stationing. And they could have another network configured to show the continuous measures on that pipe. And they could have additional networks to show, say, odometer readings for their pig runs, ILI runs. We provide users uh, different event location referencing models. What I mean by that is a user can locate event using the most common method is route and measure. But apart from that, we provide users to locate or to add new events using route and measure stationing by referent and offset. So if you have an event, we allow users to place a new event by providing the offset from an existing event. And users can use coordinates as well, and they can use a combination of coordinates and offsetting as well. So this slide is basically showing the different methods of a user locating events or placing new events. And events in pipeline is a feature class. We support two types of events, a point event. A point event could be anything like your pipe fitting, a valve, and a linear event could be like an operating pressure under which your pipeline is running. So we support both types of event, a point event and a line event. And events are simply official classes. 
Various route editing activities that we support in pipeline referencing is create, extend, realign. Realign is similar to reroute. In realignment, we support realigning with abandonment option or realigning with retirement option. Reassign route is almost like merging and the splitting of route. So we provide retirement, calibrate of route. So these are the various route editing activities that we support that the pipeline organization could benefit from to manage their central line data. We also have event measure behaviors. What this event measure behaviors is, because of the route editing activity, the events can geographically move along with the route or can change its location. So event behaviors is basically a set of rules that user can configure in case your route is edited geometrically or measure wise. And based upon how the users have set these behaviors on their events, these events would react based on that configuration. <coughs> Excuse me. So the various behaviors that uh, we support is move, retire, and stay put behavior. And this can be configured by the user at the event level. Our data is temporal. The networks, the events, the calibration points have from and to dates. So what I mean by temporal is they are time aware data. So you can go back in time or you can move forward in time and have a representation of what your network looks like and what your event looks like. Let's take a look at our platform components. A desktop is where we provide users the administration tool, administration to configure the networks, to configure their events and event measure behaviors. We also provide network editing tools such as creating a route, realignment, reassignment, all these network route editing tools are available at the desktop level. Also at the desktop level is our geoprocessing tools. Geoprocessing tools can be used for bulk loading of data, bulk loading of event data. And as I mentioned earlier, pipeline referencing supports multiple linear referencing methods. So we provide tools to do the data transformation. So if you have to transform data, transform data from one linear referencing system to another linear referencing system, sorry about that. You guys can still hear me? All right, back to business. So we provide tools to do the data transformations. Uh, we have tools to generate event shape. So if you had a uh, a spreadsheet which is just showing the route and measure for your events and you don't have shapes for it. We provide tools, geoprocessing tools, that you can take that table and use our, use our append events geoprocessing tools and we will create that shape based on the route and the measure information provided by the user. So we provide the shapes. We do uh, provide shapes for the routes as well. These geoprocessing tools are scriptable, and as any other geoprocessing tools, this can be published as GP services as well. At the pipeline referencing for server, some of the capabilities that I just discussed about, user can take those capabilities and expose it at the web service level some of the capabilities like event editing and coordinate to measure translations. We provide some of our QA, QC tools like check events tool at the pipeline referencing for server. Along with pipeline referencing for server, we also, users will also get a web application called event editor. 
Event editor is where users will be performing their edits to the event, creating new events, editing the new events. At the event editor, we also provide some selection set tools, querying tools, and to check any error in their data, we provide some QC tools at the event editor level also. So that was a brief overview of ArcGIS pipeline referencing product and I will switch to a demo now. On the screen I have here a catalog window open. Can you all read in the back there? Cool, okay. And I've already configured my advanced linear referencing system. I'll zoom just in case you guys have trouble looking at it. So in my uh, database, I've already configured an advanced linear referencing system in here. And my advanced linear referencing system has multiple networks under it. And I have events in events such as anomalies, DOT class, operating pressure, all of this registered to a network. So I've already done my configuration. At this release, the configuration of the network and event is, is through a wizard experience. However, in our future releases, we are moving towards more geoprocessing experience. We are uh, working towards building geoprocessing tools that can be used to configure the, configure the network. <coughs> Yes, that is a very good observation. So currently at this release, we support the configuration and administration in the ARC map and ARC catalog environment. And the route editing is done in ArcGIS Pro. Did that answer? Yeah. So I've already configured the network. So once I have configured my network and events, I'm going to switch to ARC map briefly to show. So in the ArcMap session, I have my network and events in here, and I'm just publishing a map services. Map services, I'm going to zoom in in this area. So you can see in, in this uh, window in here, with pipeline referencing for server, when a user has the license for pipeline referencing for server, they will see this additional capability, the linear referencing a checkbox in here that they will have to enable that. And when I go look at the capabilities of linear referencing, this is the REST URL that it provides. So when user, they are publishing a map services, they will have to check that linear referencing checkbox to be able to get to that REST URL. So I've already configured, I've already published the map. Let's go look at the map services. So this is my map services in here. It's showing all the layers and the network, the LRS network that I need. When I scroll at the end of this page, you will see it supports all the core edit operations such as identifying, querying, and returning on updates. It shows that, but along with that, you will also see a supported extension called LRS server. So when I click on that LRS server, you will see LRS specific layers in here. So I have network layers and events in here. When I scroll at the end of this page, this is when you will see all the different operations or the rest endpoints that you can get to. It has operations such as applying edits, and if your organization is working with an enter enterprise geo database, we provide uh, rest endpoints to create version, delete version, reconcile, and post. So that's all available through the LRS services. Also, when I go back to my network, my LRS network, in this case, I have an engineering network, you can again see very specific 
fields those are needed for the network lrs specific fields such as route id route name la line id and line name and you will also see from in two days as i described earlier the networks and the events are time aware so i have all those fields in here <clears throat> And you can see the various operations, the rest endpoints that you as a an user can get to it. You can have geometry to measure, measure to geometry translations, and uh, querying on the attribute sets, check on the events. These are all the rest endpoints that you could get to. So I'm going to switch now to show a simple web application that we build. When I say we, it's mostly summer. <laughs> so we built a, a web app uh, using Web App Builder. We built a simple web application in here. It has my network. It has my network and my events in here. And using the the LRS services and the rest endpoints that I just showed you, Summer built this custom widget called Route and Measure. What this widget does is I can provide the route name. I can provide the route name or I can use the tool in here to select the route. I can provide the route name and provide a measure. I want to see the start of the route, the same route I want to see the end of the route. So I provided the route information and the measure information, and I'm going to zoom to that area. It has this graphical representation here that's showing the start of the route and the end of the route. So this is a simple custom widget that Summer built. Then, so uh, you as a developer or a user can build this small custom widget in your existing uh, web applications that you are using within your organization, or you can build new web application to to support the workflow that is needed for the you know, that is needed for your pipeline organization and that needs linear referencing capabilities that you can call this rest endpoints to. It's a simple widget. All right, so going back to this. So that was about the pipeline referencing server um, extension capabilities. But as I mentioned, along with the along with the pipeline referencing server capabilities, user also gets a web application called Event Editor. Uh, event Editor is easy to uh, deploy a web application, and I'll show you the configuration. This is the config.json file for Event Editor. And when you look at this configuration file, at Event Editor, we support uh, different kinds of security, such as portal for ArcGIS security, uh, we have Windows authentication. We support Windows authentication security as well as ArcGIS uh, security token. And as I uh, mentioned again earlier, the pipeline referencing is packaged along with data reviewer and workflow manager. So if your pipeline, organi pipeline organization is leveraging data reviewer for their quality control and quality checks and workflow manager. That configuration also can be provided here within this config.json file. If your enterprise, if uh, your organization use, is using enterprise geodatabase and you want users to have an ability to create their own version work in their own version and reconcile post, you can, you can configure those in here by making it true or false. So we provide various configurations that user can play with uh, before deploying event editor. 
So let's take a look at the event editor. This is the event editor web application has three tabs. The first tab is the map tab. Basically provide you tools for navigation. You can search for your routes. If you have configured your base map in portal, you can you can bring that in here as well. So let's let's search for a route. Uh, let's look for route one, line A. Even if I didn't type it right, it will pull up uh, all that info, all that search results. With the search results, I can zoom to that route. Or if I want to zoom to a specific measure, I can do that as well. So I'm going to go in here and say zoom at the start of the route till the end of the route. And I can hit zoom button in there. OK. All right. So you can use the find route tool to zoom zoom in, zoom at a specific measure. If you want to flash a route, you can do that. Let's move to our second tab in here, edit tab. This is where the users will be able to add new events to it or make attribute changes to their existing events. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see this configuration. This is the configuration that we just saw in the config.json file. If a user wanted to give an ability for the users to create version or to delete or to reconcile and post, this is that uh, versioning. Yeah. I'm going to switch to Dev Summit because I don't want to mess other people's work there. So uh, let's add a point event. So we have edit events in here from where I can add point events. So let's, I'm going to type, I can either type a route name or I can use the select a route on a map tool and I can select to that. Let's zoom to the route that I selected zoom to the route extent and let's go ahead add a valve in here i picked my event layer i've added i'm going to say i want to add a valve at this measure and it it shows the graphical representation on the screen where the valve will be added based on the measure so i was using the route and measure method to add a valve but if you have the coordinates, you can use coordinates as well. Or if you want to offset your event based on an existing event, you can do that as well. So we provide various methods for locating or for placing new events. I provide that the information, hit next. This is the attribute table information that it's pulling from the UPDM data i'm using updm data in here data model so it's pulling all the valve attribute information and i hit save and my valve is created so when i hit the save it was using the apply edit rest endpoints that we just saw a few minutes back and my valve is now created in here uh, similarly, for line events, for line events, we have um, a, a little different uh, workflow. So for line events, we provide user to set up uh, attribute set. So I have an attribute set in here. So for line events, what user can do is they can customize this attribute set. So by default, all the line events will show up in the in the default view of attribute set. But when you are adding line events, if they were, if you had your pipeline organization had a specific workflow, like say if you are doing a pipe replacement job and every time you are doing a pipe replacement job, maybe it's like the coating or the characteristic of the pipes is what the events that you are replacing with, you can create an customized attribute set to just uh, work with that specific workflow. So I have here a dev summit workflow, uh, dev summit attribute set that I created. And um, 
if I compare this with my default one, you can see my default one has a whole list of my map as such has just two linear events, but you can see my operating pressure has the system generated fields and the other fields that I might not want the user to be able to fill it every time or I don't want to expose it. So my default has all these fields in here, but I when I come back and go to my dev summit, you can see I have some customized fields in here just to show what the users need to fill. So that's basically what attribute set is. And when a user creates an attribute set, they can save that and uh, they can save that and share it within their organization as well. So um, I have this real simple uh, dev summit attribute set that I created. So every time I am uh, doing I'm adding a line event, only these linear features, linear events and attributes will show up that I'll just show you now. So that was my attribute sets. I come in here and say I want to add a line event. Let's see. So in, in the route two, let's go back to my layers. Let's see, I want to switch off so we can see things clearly. So here in the route two, I don't have an operating pressure and looks like I do not have a DOT class either. So this would be a perfect example for me to use the Dove Summit attribute set that I just created. I'm going to say add line events. I want to, I can provide the line name or I could just point to it. So once I pick the line, all the routes belonging to that uh, line will show up in here. So I want to add this to route two. I want to add it from, from the route start. And even in the line, uh, even while adding line events, we support various methods in here, offsetting by coordinates, coordinates and offsetting. We, we support all those um, referent location methods. Since this is a line, we have to provide the from and to. And I want to place this till the end of the route. So you can see there is a graphical representation showing where my events will be placed. And there are a couple other checks that you could enable. Like I do not want, uh, I want to prevent measures not on a route. So you can, and if you had an existing existing event and you are placing a new event on the top of it, you can enable this to retire the existing events and place a new event on that as well. So now when I go to this um, next page, this is where my attribute information is fill, coming from. It's reading from the custom attribute set, but if I switch this back to default, it will show all the linear feature that's available in my map services and all the attributes associated with it. So I'm going to switch back to my dev sum and provide a pressure. If you have a domain associated in your data model, it will read as well. I'm going to say this is design. Say pressure 600, that sounds bad, but will we go with it? Class type two. Let's just say we calculated the HCA class and hit the save button. So you can see my operating pressure is, my operating pressure is in here and it put the DOT class as well for the trout too. So with one single linear event uh, uh, experience, you can add multiple line events at the same time, at the same, at the same uh, location. So now that we saw how to edit events, let's see some of our selection tool sets. I'm going to switch on my operating pressure. 
Let's select the operating pressure now. And when we hit the save, when we uh, added the linear events and when we hit the save button, it again uses the apply edits rest endpoints. I'm going to select this operating pressure that I just created. We'll look at that attributes in here. It's the design pressure value that we put. Scroll all the way in here. So we have this field called location error. If, if you're um, loading an event and if there was a location error that will show up in here as well. So my, I know my route R2 ends at 15, 1500, 15,000. So if I just arbitrarily put a wrong number in here, wrong measure value and hit save and say, okay, you can come to this location error here and see the partial match for the measure. So it didn't find the two measure was right, but uh, the from measure was right, but the two measure was not right. So it's using the check events and the apply, um, apply edits, uh, rest endpoints in here when you are adding your events. I'm going to go back, change this, and save this. And my location error is fixed. So that's our selection uh, tool set. We also provide tools to do a dynamic segmentation within the event attribute. That's the return attribute set here. And the last tab is the review tab. The review tab is where we provide users to check any errors in their event data. So they can run checks like detecting gaps, detecting overlaps in their events, or if they have invalid measures for their events. They can run these checks on a specific route or on a selected routes, they can run it on all the events, or you can take a leverage of the attribute sets that we just created. So we provide users different option in here to do their quality control and quality assurance of their data. This is a bad idea. Uh, that con oh, that doesn't conclude my presentation. I have one more thing to show. So all these things that we just showed have a really great documentation. Okay. This is our ArcGIS pipe ArcGIS pipeline referencing for server web page. The developers will really benefit from some of the quick uh, links that we provide. For example, the REST API. The REST API uh, information is here. How to get to the linear referencing services, how to get to the REST endpoints. All that information is provided in here. Apart from that, we have this great JavaScript developer uh, samples that some are built. Um, we have that users can, the developers can get to it now and play with that. Uh, the widget that we sh just showed used measure to geometry conversion. The users can get to it, the sample JavaScript uh, samples are here. And we have, we have really great documentation that shows deploying of event editor. It shows how to configure the security in event editor, how to configure portal for uh, ArcGIS online for event editor, various documentations are provided to configure your event editor that's available here. So I highly encourage you guys to get to this web page and uh, check some of these quick links. This, this will really help you in, in doing any development or configuring the event editor. With that, um, that's all the stuff I had uh, to demo and up to take any questions if you have. Go ahead. Do you have an API reference for um, using the uh, Pro SDK um, tools and, and capabilities with it? I 
they didn't see anything in the SDK 7 on it, right? Um, so for our location rep referencing extension, we don't actually uh, provide any desktop SDKs to play with. Um, we only have our REST endpoints or geoprocessing services. Pardon? How dependent are we on P pipes data set? Okay, so P pipes, are you going to configure P pipes as your events? Well, yeah, if you already imported it in there, then you can do an extract of P pipes to instantiate your set of events mm -hmm. and start to build those out. My, my question is as pipes change in the other part of the UPM data model, how does that affect? Um, I'm not sure if I really understand the question, but if you are using P pipes as your central line, so using that P pipes, we're going to build the routes or we provide users tools to build the routes based on whatever the central line is. Uh, but I, I guess I have to see your workflow. It might be more related to a UPDM data modeling question as such. But we have seen for the transmission pipelines uh, that there might be a probability that P pipes is going to be events and not necessarily central line. Uh, however, for vertically integrated solutions for utilities, P pipes uh, that's outside my domain, P pipes might be used as a central line, but I'm not necessarily sure if that's going to be a part of their linear referencing system itself. So we have seen different um, different users like transmission versus vertically integrated or distributor users using UPDM data model differently. So uh, I really have to look at your workflow to to see. ArcGIS pipeline referencing is a flexible information model. The product works with any data model as long as you've, you have the minimum schema, the location model schema that I showed on my slides. As long as that location model resides within that database, a pipeline referencing would work we, uh, UPDM is ESRI's database and it already has the, has the minimum schema in place, so it's easier to configure. Um, I will. I will have to get back with you on that. I, I cannot talk on behalf of APDM or UPDM, but I'll. I'll find the right resources for you to get that answer. Okay. Um, so let me do that. So the. So the way that ESRI presented this to to me earlier to my company was that uh, the real power behind it is that it combines um, geometric network editing with dynamic segmentation. So I don't know if this relates to the P-Pipes question, but it almost sounded like if you did um, editing over the geometric network, it would communicate to the database model to reflect those changes over in the routes. That's, that's what I understood this UPDM implementation to be. Is that accurate? Or, oh, well, okay. ArcGIS pipeline referencing at its official release works with ArcGIS desktop 10.5 and ArcGIS Pro 1.4, and ArcGIS Enterprise 10.5 as well. So uh, we have not seen geometric network available in ArcGIS Pro yet to, to be able to answer that question. I know the utility, utility network is still uh, is in their alpha version. Their beta version is coming out soon, so 
uh, utility network is the next generation of geometric network. Geometric network is not ported to ArcGIS Pro yet. So when it when it is released, we will see how these two products will work together. All right, if you don't have any more questions, thanks for coming and please don't forget to take, <coughs> take the survey. Thank you so much. <laughs>